Welcome back. Namaskara. This is the video series on Intro to Transportation Engineering. Now we are into part E of module 2. Topic of this part, Passing and Decision Site Distances. In addition to stopping site distance, we deal with three other site distances. Decision Site Distance, Passing Site Distance and Intersection Site Distance. In this part, we are going to talk about only the first two. We will briefly talk about the intersection side distance when we talk about intersection control. Your takeaway from this part is going to be about differentiating stopping side distance with two other types of side distances called passing side distance and decision side distance. You will be able to sketch the dynamic interaction among three vehicles involved in passing maneuver as well as the sign control and lane markings in a passing zone. Speaking of sketches, take a look at this multi-lane highway, by which I mean two or more lanes in each direction. A blue car and a red car going north on four-lane highway, on this four-lane highway. A green car is coming southbound. Let's say the blue car is doing 30 miles per hour. And if you plot the trajectory of blue car with distance on the y-axis, and time on the x-axis, the trajectory looks something like this. The southbound green car's trajectory can also be shown using this green line. Let's say the red car is doing 40 miles per hour. Neither the slow moving blue car nor the opposing green car is going to slow the red car down. Its trajectory is going to look something like this. Now, let's put the same three cars on a two-lane road. Let's walk through the stages in red car passing the blue car. Start with the trajectory of the blue car, which is doing a 30 miles per hour, constant 30 miles per hour. And then the green car, which is also doing a constant speed on the, in the opposite direction. And this dotted line represents the red car's original speed of 40 miles per hour. And had it not been for the slow moving blue car, that would have been the trajectory. Coming close to the blue car, the red car has to follow the blue car exactly at 30 miles per hour. That means this red arrow has to be parallel to the blue line. And the driver of the red car decides to accelerate go to the other side and pass and this steeper arrow represents increased acceleration uh, probably higher speed not probably it will be higher speed than 40 miles per hour in order to cross the uh, blue car right where this red line meets the blue line and you can see that in the in the diagram on the right once the crossing is done to the other side, red car driver switches back to its original speed and you see the horizontal displacement between the dotted line and the solid red line is the time lost before, I mean the time lost due to following the blue car. And finally the green car is has approached much uh, closer and the end state of the cars is going to be like this. And the distances associated with various points are marked D1, D2, D3, and D4. And they are explained in detail in the next slide. This figure gives you some design approximations for D1, D2, D3, and D4. And keep in mind, this is the authentic diagram and the one earlier is my own creation. By the way, these zones D1 to D4 are named. What are they? D1 is called the initial maneuver distance and it is given by this equation. Of course, the source of this equation is the green book. By the way, more often than not, tables and charts provided in green book are used for determining PSD values for given conditions. That's why our lesson plan doesn't include solving problems on passing side distance. Therefore, we are not covering the equations for PSD in detail. You can peruse the variables involved by pausing the video here or anywhere. 
Here, note that a new variable m is introduced for computing passing distance. m is the difference in speed of the passed vehicle, which was shown in blue in my illustration, and the passing vehicle, which is the red car. In the example we demonstrated, m value would be minus, which is the speed, I mean, sorry, 40, which is the speed of the red car, 40 minus 30, which is the speed of the blue car, or its m value is going to be 10. D2 is the distance for which passing vehicle has occupied the wrong side of the road. Again, pause the video as necessary to absorb the information before proceeding. The clearance length D3 is the distance between opposing vehicle, the green one, and the passing vehicle, the red one. Studies have shown that these values range from 100 to 200 feet, uh, 250 feet. This table provided in Green Book is used to look up appropriate values for D3. Encroachment distance D4 is the distance that an approaching vehicle moves during the passing maneuver, and it is given by two-thirds of D2, which is the occupancy distance. Here's a much simplified chart provided to you in the Green Book. For a given speed to find out PSD or its four subcomponents, just look up this chart. Here is another easy to read table on PSD, again from Green Book. Reading from this table, for two lane highways with a design speed of 45 miles per hour, the calculated and designed PSD is 1625 feet. We determine required passing side distances, all right. We also determine the locations where there is adequate PSD and locations where there is not adequate PSD. Then, how do you communicate that information to the drivers? If you are thinking MUTCD will provide you some guidance, you are absolutely on the right track. But first, let's relate this to what we see on everyday driving. Here's a short video clip from one of many trips I took on a bunch of two-lane roads. While you watch the video in slow motion, look for pavement markings and road sites related to PSD, if any. In case you missed it, pay attention to the left of the road. Here's the sign that was warning me about no passing zone. As you can see from pavement markings, here's the inflection point for no passing from both sides. At this point, I am not allowed to switch to the other side, but if I am already on the other side, the pavement markings indicate that I still have enough side distance to get back to my side. Exactly at the same location, the same thing applies to the guy on the other side of the road. For the opposing traffic, the no passing zone warning sign is here. You almost missed this one too, didn't you? This is one of the few signs which is placed on the wrong side of the road. By the way, the only logic in my choice of colors is that you can see things better. In case you remembered a different sign related to passing, this regulatory do not pass sign comes once you are into the no passing zone on the right side of the road. This is what I mean by designing the engineering controls and communicating those controls to the drivers properly. Actions like this will improve reaction times of drivers because there is proper anticipation. Do better reaction times translate into improved safety? Heck yeah! Here is an example of how detailed MUTCD gets about payment markings for passing zones. Decision side distance. Now to a quick note on decision side distance. It's the distance required for a driver to detect an unexpected or otherwise difficult to perceive information source, recognize that source, select an appropriate speed and path, and initiate and complete the required maneuver safely and efficiently. 
Because decision side distance gives drivers additional margin for error and affords them sufficient length to maneuver their vehicles at the same or reduced speed rather than just stop. In other words, decision side distance is not about stopping. Its values are sub substantially greater than stopping side distance. Here is a lookup table used by Washington State DOT to look up values for decision side distance. As you can see, the values change depending on the type of maneuver. For example, A means a stop on a rural highway, C means rural speed, path, direction change, etc. No doubt, this table is adapted from the Green Book. I forgot the source of this table, it may very well be from the Green Book. But it gives you a comparative picture of stopping side distance, passing side distance, and decision side distance. As you can see, for any given speed, stopping side distance is less than decision side distance is further less than passing side distance. And this shouldn't come as a surprise to you at all. To summarize, the term side distance is not always used in the context of stopping. Decision side distance takes into consideration the need for avoidance maneuver or simply reducing speed. We will use the charts and tables from Green Book or whatever the local DOT practice is. Passing side distance requirement is much higher than stopping side distance requirement or decision side distance requirement. And that concludes this part. Thanks for watching.